Good morning, everybody. This is going to be in English. Uh, and once you get uh, the topic, you will understand why I'm doing this in English. My name is Fidiot. It is Monday morning, very, very early. And I am the biggest fan of this lady, Mayor Femke Halsema, the greatest and nicest mayor in the entire uh, whole wide world of all time. Uh, she and her, she and me, or her and me, I don't know, uh, we are about the same age and uh, we come from uh, similar backgrounds. Her uh, parents were left wing Labour Party members. My parents were uh, of similar ilk. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to be doing with this YouTube channel. I'm just messing around, so please don't take anything seriously. At present, I'm just uh, uploading videos and then deleting them after a while. Um, it's, it's, it's somewhat of a hobby, but a very mild one. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about Star Wars. Um, this Thursday or this Friday, Four more days, I will see the conclusion of the trilogy of trilogies, and namely the final installment in the Star Wars saga, in the Skywalker saga. Now, I saw these movies, and I'm guessing she saw them too, uh, when I was seven, eight years old, till about when I was 12 years old. And I was flabbergasted because there was nothing like this out there. It was just something truly unique. So I loved the first one. I absolutely adored the second one. Um, and by the time the third one came out, well, it was already a little bit less because I was 13, 14 when that one came out and it had these little Ewoks in it. But yeah, Star Wars is made for kids and I was very invested in the characters. Um, so I watched these three movies in the cinema um, and they made a lasting impression and then years later during the era of video and video stores George Lucas re-released these movies uh, adding special effects and sound effects and other things and by the time he did that I guess I was about 25 then and by that time I didn't even go to the cinema anymore because we had a good television, big screen, and there was a video store nearby, so I could rent. And I think even then we were already using DVDs. So I could, you know, for a couple of euros in those days, uh, guilders, I could just rent any movie I wanted uh, and even rip it, even make a copy of it, you know. So by that time, yeah, at the, you know, rent a movie, watch it at home on big screen because the cinema was expensive and very crowded and we didn't have any um, cinema near where we lived so it, it, it actually meant travel to and from the cinema and we were just way too lazy for that uh, with a high-end video store or DVD store by that time uh, nearby um, so, with, so I, I, I owned the special editions um, I didn't really remember the originals, so, you know, all the changes, etc. cetera, made, made no bad impression on me. It was really great seeing these movies again. And by this time I was married. So I showed them to my uh, now ex-wife. Yeah, she loved it too. She hadn't grown up with Star Wars. She came from, from one of those families where, where they never went to the cinema <laughs> because it was considered for lower class people. And she came from one of those families where you have to go to ballet um, and the Rijksmuseum, a cultured. Anyway, then at, at the end of this millennium, around 1999, I think, um, George Lucas then begins uh, his work on the prequel trilogy. Now, the Star Wars trilogy tells us the story, everybody knows the story of Luke Skywalker and how he becomes a Jedi uh, and how he saves the universe from the evil clutches of the Emperor. 
En uh, his Stormtroopers, de, de prequel trilogy, is uh, the coming of age story of Anakin Skywalker, the father of Luke Skywalker. And it essentially shows us how he becomes Darth Vader. I didn't watch them in the cinema. Again, uh, we rented them on uh, on uh, DVD and watched them at home. I, I didn't think they were particularly good. I mean, again, I was invested in the characters so much so that I wanted to see this origin story. It wasn't bad, but compared to the original. I didn't care to, to, too much CGI, I thought. Way too much. Just like almost like watching... Um, uh, a digital cartoonish type quality some of it had. Um, but yeah, that's what George Lucas wanted to do. He wanted to further the technology, etc. And I mean, there were three fun enough movies. If, you know, I'm bored once in a while. Sure, I guess I can, you know, sort of watch parts of it. Uh, but by this time, we have a high-speed internet, yes, as he is making these movies. So from this moment on, let's say... Uh, the start of the new millennium, 2001, 2002, 2003, from that moment on, it becomes possible to just watch any movie all the time online, right? You own it. Um, so you can watch it uh, at home uh, using some type of uh, hard drive. Uh, but uh, even then, in the early days, it was already possible to, possible to stream movies online. This happened way, way before Netflix, and this happened at mostly at illegal sites, where you could just watch any TV show, any sports game, any movie you want. So the offering, yeah, what is out there, goes up, I don't know, like a hundred times your local video store. So all the video stores, they go bankrupt, and they slowly all disappear, and people start watching their stuff online. And as online and internet grows, the offering just becomes you know, incrementally large. I mean, you can watch any Japanese movie, any one, any ever made, if you find the right website or the right uh, download uh, click. Yeah, so the movies become less interesting because they're not that really good, but also because there is so much other stuff out there. Star Wars was unique, and you could only see it in the cinema back then. You know? But by the time the prequels came out, the movies did very well, but I didn't think they were particularly good. Um, too much CGI and uh, everybody who's in it, you know, they, they've all gotten older and richer and fatter. So they're not uh, cutting edge uh, filmmakers and, and, and uh, actors anymore like they were. Uh, in the in the late 1970s and early 1980s, but the movies did very well. And then years go by without Star Wars, and then Disney buys Lucasfilm <laughs> for a whopping four billion dollars, four billion and a little bit, and that's and and immediately Disney promises uh, new Star Wars movies, which I thought was hmm, <laughs> maybe not the smartest thing. Maybe you know think it through before you do it, and that's where we are now. The, the what is called the sequel trilogy, uh, which consists of uh, uh, three movies, the third one coming out uh, this weekend. The first one was called The Force Awakens. Um, and when it came out, it had great buzz. I mean, it really did. It had, it had wonderful media buzz and it had a nice trailer. And, you know, there was that Star Wars feel. So I decided you know what, I'm going to go to the cinema. I haven't been in ages. And I'm going to pick a morning, you know, like a, a work day morning where there's nobody there. And I'm going to watch it in uh, 2D. I, I have bad eyesight. I wear glasses. So watching anything in 3D is an absolute nightmare. And I don't like it. I don't think it adds to the movie. I like 2D because I'm boring and old. So I managed to find... Uh, uh, a cinema and you know, uh, 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 buy an online ticket and print it, and I, I could I could pick my seat, you know. So 
it, it really wasn't all that crowded. It really wasn't all. And I saw it maybe one, two days after it came out. Yeah, no long lines, no nothing. Saw it, saw it in the city center, where it's normally quite crowded. But yeah, an, an early morning showing, and there was nobody there. And uh, well, I sort of let it come over me, and it was a fun enough movie. But when I left the cinema, I was sort of wandering around, taking the tram home, and I thought, hmm, was it really all that good? And I sort of decided it wasn't. It kind of was like a remake of the first one. You know, it's a droid, a different kind of droid, and there are secret plans inside the droid. And everybody wants those secret plans that are inside the droid. And it ends in a lightsaber battle between a Darth Vader type uh, character and a Luke type character. And they blow up another Death Star. It was you know, like a remake. And it, it really wasn't that good. Anyway, I saw it in December, I think, 2015. And then later in 2016, uh, a good copy came out. And I don't have a big television anymore. I have a beamer, so I have a big white wall. I can project uh, mo project movies on that wall and uh, put on my headphones. And it's wonderful. It's like having home cinema. It's really nice, especially if you're watching something uh, by yourself alone in the dark. And I watched this thing again, The Force Awakens. <laughs> and it really wasn't all that good. I mean, it was kind of boring. and formula and you know the, just and the characters they were kind of two-dimensional i mean I, I really wasn't invested in the characters and then uh, disney starts supporting real money into uh, the star wars brand because they think well we cannot lose the the force awakens was a two billion plus dollar movie it broke every record there was people loved it um and they made like 45% of all their money in the United States, which is quite rare because movies, it's usually 70 abroad, 30% in, in the United States. But this was something quite different. So Disney thought, we cannot lose. We can do anything we want. So they made this movie, Rogue One, <laughs> which I didn't see in the cinema. It's okay-ish. I mean, it's a lot better than The Force Awakens, which is worrisome enough. But the whole third act of the movie had to be redone and the director got fired. Mm, okay. <laughs> then they do the follow-up to this one. So we have The Force Awakens. Yeah, the Force Awakens. Then the, right, the, the Last Jedi. And that's where things go terribly, terribly wrong. Because this movie was just horrible. It was just absolutely horrible. I watched a, a watchable copy a couple of months after it came out. And by that time, the buzz online was already, oh my God. God, this movie is so horrible. It's just horrible. And I, uh, I found a watchable copy online. And I watched it and it just sucked from beginning to end. It was just complete, it, it, just a mess all over the place. And yeah, not invested in these characters. I really didn't care about what happened to them and what they were doing. And just incredibly stupid stuff. But to make matters worse, this movie in The Last Jedi, they kill Luke Skywalker. <laughs> they kill Han Solo in The Force Awakens. And they kill Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. What the fuck am I watching for, do you think? And then to make matters even, even worse, um, the, the woman who plays Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, dies <laughs> after having a heart attack. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at her misfortune, obviously. I'm laughing at the, 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 the clusterfuck, the disaster that is unfolding. Uh, she suffered a heart attack on a plane and then died shortly thereafter. So now the three main characters, what this entire nine episode uh, epic is really about, are now dead. It's a, you know, there's nothing left. Uh, yeah, indeed, the last Jedi. What? <laughs> And the movie did pretty badly. It did more than 1 billion euros, but it did like 800 million dollars less than The Force Awakens. 
And by that time, people had a similar experience that I had, namely they, they you know, bought The Force Awakens or they found a watchable copy online, watched it again, and then they thought, oh my God, <laughs> it's kind of bad. I really don't care. Then they watched Rogue One again, and they thought, nah. Well, it's nice. The Darth Vader scene is nice, right? Where he just mows <laughs> through a spaceship, killing anything that moves, and even things that don't move. But this, this was the, the, the cutting off point. People just disliked this movie. And people started talking about it online. Like, God, I saw The, the Last Jedi. It was really horrible. And for some strange reason, the Hollywood-based media uh, shortly thereafter, followed by the mainstream media, started fighting <laughs> with Star Wars fans. It's quite unique. I, I didn't know that existed. But they started to saying things like, well, if you don't like the movie, then you're a racist. Well, why? Because the movie is bad? How can I be a racist because you made a crappy movie? That sounds ridiculous. And then they had another argument, which is e equally intellectual, uh, and equally valid, namely, if you don't like the movie, then you are against diversity. Against the diversity? How, how can it be against something that's just a fact of life? What are you, nuts? I don't live in some village. I live in a major city. I live in Amsterdam. Diversity is a fact of life. Anyway, and how can I be against diversity? Because you made a crappy movie. You made a movie I don't like. It doesn't say anything about how I feel about diversity. That's just stupid. And then the final argument where, <laughs> where they lost their fan base is they started saying, they started to up it. So the, the people involved with making this movie and, and professional journalists started saying things like, well, your, this is toxic masculinity. It's because you're a man uh, who's older than 40 years old. That's, that's your problem. That's, that's, what, that's just what's wrong with the world. Um, um, you're a misogynist. You're a white supremacist. I mean, they, they went nuts. And that's when people, be, be, fans, became angry because they thought, this is just madness. What's going on here? Disney just thinks, well, you know, we didn't make $2.2 billion on this movie, but we made $1.3, and we made $1.3 on Rogue One. Yep, we're going to keep pouring money into this. So Disney then decides to make Solo, a Star Wars story, a movie that nobody wanted. Okay, Han Solo had died in The Force Awakens, which was a stupid decision because you could have milked him for three, two more movies. But now we're going to do an origin story of Han Solo. And this thing, <laughs> I, the directors were both fired after they had completed three quarters of the movie or something. And then they hired somebody new who redid three quarters of the movie or something. And the movie made something like 300 million euros, uh, dollars, uh, which is what the movie probably cost because it's essentially two movies. And with double the marketing, it completely and utterly bombed, and rightfully so, because this this was just crap, just total crap. Just two-dimensional, boring characters in a two-dimensional, very boring story. And that's when things explode. And that's where, uh, where Disney uh, starts playing, I would call it panic football. You know, just try something. Um, because Star Wars movies, they, they must make $1 billion. It's, it's just a given. They have to. And that's when the toy st sales start dropping even further. And basically what we have seen is since The Force Awakens, we have seen the brand decline. And it's been, it, it, and it's been, a, st and it's been a harsh decline. It's been a steep decline. Now, this year, they released The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, which is great fun. I, I want to do a separate video about it. But this year, they are then going to release um, The Rise of Skywalker, the final uh, 
installment of the rise of skywalker here we go we already have images and all kinds of other things wow there it is and um that's the way hollywood works now um when 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 a company is making a movie and they think eh, this movie might not really do so well what they do is they basically leak <laughs> the entire movie to all kinds of sources uh online so Presumably, people will then get interested and want to see it. Uh, so about a year before the movie comes out, that, that's when all the leaks start happening. And it just gets worse uh, as the, 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 the release of the movie uh, co comes closer. And the leaks that I've been reading about this movie are, oh my God, so horrible. And they already lost so much, so many fans. Uh, by making bad movies and then and then trying to kick their fans in the balls, essentially. And I, I am very, very skeptical. Uh, again, for me, it makes no difference whatsoever. I normally don't go to the cinema anyway, so I'm not going to see it in the cinema. But I think it's going to be bad. I have a bad, bad, bad feeling about this. I mean, how are they going to rescue this trilogy, I mean, the first one was mediocre at best and boring and a remake. The second one was, was horrible. It, it made me dislike the characters even more. What are they going to do to rescue this brand? Well, it's not going to be The Rise of Skywalker. I just don't think so. I think it's going to be boring, but then at least it will be over. It will be over. And I mean, the prequels, they, they weren't that great either. Let's be honest. You know, if you're bored for two and a half hours and you can take your pick, any movie you can see, you know, on your own sound system and media system with your headset on, it, are you really going to pick a movie, the, 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 one of the prequels? Of course not. You're going to pick a good movie. And these movies, the sequel trilogy, they, they just ruined and wrecked the Star Wars brand and then insulting the fans, especially the American fans who are quite vocal, has only made things worse. So here's my prediction. It will be a successful movie, obviously, because it's a Star Wars movie and it's the last one. So that has some uh, attracting power. People will go because they have to. So I saw all nine of them in the cinema, you know, that, that becomes sort of a, an accomplishment. But I don't think it's a good movie. I think it's gonna it's gonna pretty much suck. Um, so what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna find a watchable copy, um, which will probably come out as soon as the movie comes out, because of pirating, and it's gonna be released in Asia and Russia. <laughs> so so don't worry about it. There will be a watch, watchable copy within a week of its release. And then I'm going to do a, a, a true spoiler review of it. Um, uh, in my humble opinion, the brand has the brand and this sequel trilogy has so has been spoiled so much already that nobody really cares. I mean, uh, it's not really trending online. If you compare this to, let's say, um, Avengers Endgame, yeah, which was also the last movie, the end of an era. I mean, everybody was wildly enthusiastic about it. And this, yeah, I, 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 Disney made the wrong decision from day one. That's what I'm saying. I'm curious, did, did you watch them in the cinema, the first trilogy? And did you watch the second trilogy, the prequel trilogy with your kids? Maybe, because she has a son. I have a daughter. My daughter didn't want to watch the prequel trilogy. Um, now she was born right after the prequel trilogy, I think. Let me have a look-see here. This is the sequel trilogy. Sorry, the prequel trilogy. Yeah, no, her kids weren't born then yet. So I'm guessing she didn't see the prequel trilogy in the cinema either. And by the time this came around, my guess is our mayor doesn't go to the cinema because it's too crowded and everybody would recognize her. Um, 
she already has no privacy. So some privacy on your night out. So I think she does a lot indoors and didn't see any of this in the cinema. I like having seen this in the cinema, but yeah, immediately as I left the cinema, I had a bad feeling and uh, my uh, worries, <laughs> uh, I was right uh, on that front because it's, it's progressively gotten worse. And uh, considering the downward spiral, this, this, this steep decline that we have seen movie after movie, um, if my predictions are right, then this will be the, the worst of the bunch yet. Uh, what Disney needs is some radical course correction. It looks like they've done that to an extent with Mandalorian. And I will do a separate video about that uh, once I've finished season one. Thank you all for your time. I, I hope you enjoyed my wonderful accent. And my daughter is going to complain about that all day. Until next time. <laughs>